I am Laura Goodwin and you are watching Laura X Annie. So I am here today with my play collection. I'm going to take you through every play and then tell you a bit about the play. So I'll probably just read the synopsis, it makes more sense. So the first play I have is Lovers by Brian Friel. Lovers comprise two short complimentary plays, Winners and Losers. In the first, the lovers are a young couple preparing for their final school exams and their imminent wedding. The girl is pregnant. Although they promise each other happiness, their deaths by drowning save them from a more likely destiny. In the second play, the lovers are older, but their passion at first is no less real. It is their marriage that brings its share of compromises and unhappiness. These plays combine to suggest the fallible hopes and disenchantments of the varieties of love, D.S. Maxwell. They have become pre perennial favourites with drama companies, teachers, students and audience all over the world. I've actually not read the full thing, I just read the monologues. The next play I have read the whole way through, it is Road by Jim Cartwright. I did this in October with my college, I played Lane. Um, so it says here, in the course of one wild night, the drunken guide Scullery conducts a tour of his derelict Lancashire Road. Jim Cartwright's theatrical debut, Road, was first performed at the Royal Court Theatre and is now considered a modern classic. So I do love this. I do love Road. Like, I didn't think I'd like it at the start. I actually loved it by the end. Another one that I read just for the monologue was Fat Men in Skirts by Nicky Silver. After their plane crashes, Phyllis and her son Bishop are stranded on a desert island for five years. During their stay, Bishop is transformed from a stuttering Catherine Hepburn, Hepburn obsessed little boy into a feral savage who eventually rapes his mother. Phyllis evolves from a glib, call, calloused, sophisticated to a helpless adult shell. Left to fend for themselves, they dine on the bodies of those less, less fortunate and eventually become lovers. At home we see Howard, Phyllis's husband and famous movie director, continuing life with his somewhat loopy ex-porn star mistress, Pam. Pam moves in with Howard and becomes pregnant. In Act 2, Bishop and Phyllis return to civilization, but their savage lifestyle is not easily shed. All four characters live together, walking on eggshells around Bishop, who now is barbarous beyond reason and has amassed an incredible shoe collection to impress his mother. Pam is reduced to pretending she is a domestic help and is rapidly growing tired of it. Howard is too burdened with guilt to act on anyone's behalf. Phyllis reaches out to Pam and confines that she and Bishop are lovers, but before Pam can convey this to Howard, she is killed by Bishop, who proceeds to eat her. When Howard discovers this, he too pays the price and becomes dinner for Bishop and Phyllis. In Act 3, Bishop is being treated in a hostel for the criminally insane. He is haunted by his mother's ghost and pursued by a demonically cheerful fellow inmate. He refuses to accept what the doctors know to be true, that he killed Phyllis. Finally, as the walls between past and present break down in Bishop's minds, he confesses to the matricide. We see the scene where Phyllis asks Bishop to murder her. Bishop remembers his mother's recurring dream about a £300 transvestite. This monstrosity, this monstrosity multiplied in her dreams and became several fat men in skirts and cages. It is acceptance of his memory that may allow Bishop to heal, move forward and understand the relationship between love and harm. I played Popo Martin who is demonically cheerful fellow inmate. That's me. I was Popo Martin. Hi, I am Popo Martin. Oh my god. I just love that. Like, I love that monologue and I think I'm going to enjoy the play but because it was during Grey to Do That I was like stressing about reading it so I was like, uh, I just got to read the monologue. I'm trying to get the synopsis, blah blah blah. But like, now I can sit down and actually enjoy it without thinking, oh my god, I've got to do this for good genius. Next play I have... Oh, uh, you can see I've read the whole way through, which I have and actually... I've seen it live as well with Louise Beerley as the title character and it's Miss Julie by August Strindenburg. In Miss Julie, a willful young aristocrat whose perverse nature has already driven her fiancé to break off their engagement, um, pursues and effectively seduces her father's valley during the course of a Midsummer's Eve celebration. The progress of that seduction in the play's stunning den denouement shocked Swedish audiences who first attended the play in 1889. Despite its controversial uh, debut, this now classic drama, inspired by the new ideas of naturalism and psychology that swept Europe in the late 19th century, helped to shape modern theatre and remains one of the most potent and most frequently performed of modern plays. The full text of Miss Julie is reprinted here as translated by blah 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 blah. Right. So, I saw this with Louise Bailey at the Citizens Theatre in Glasgow, which is amazing because I saw Molly Hooper play Miss Julie and I actually got to do this as part of my voice medley. So, yeah. Now we are on to Shakespeare. I have 
a few Shakespeare plays. First up, we have William Shakespeare's Richard III. Now, I have a very special version of this. I have the one that ties in with Jamie Lloyd's version that was at Trafalgar Studios back in 2014. I want to say, yeah, it was 2014, it wasn't last year. And um, this is a tie-in, so it actually has a rehearsal diary of Mar about Martin, and it's obviously got Martin Freeman on the cover. So, um, basically it says, you all know Richard III, but I might as well just do it. In the aftermath of the Civil War, Richard, Duke of Glo Gloucestershire, resolves to claw his way to political power at any cost. A master of manipulation, subtle wit and be beguiling charm, he orchestrates his unlawful ascent by spinning a ruthless web of deceit and betrayal. His staunch ambition has horrifying consequences. When finding himself utterly alone and steeped in dread, he is forced to answer for his bloody deeds. If you want a really good version to watch Richard III, Martin Freeman obviously at the trial studios but actually the hollow crown obviously I've got the hollow crown but I've got the first season up there the Richard III with um, Benedict Cumberbatch that is really good the three episode series was really good so I think if you want to watch it and then read with the tie-in yeah next up we have Hamlet by William Shakespeare <sighs> so this is it doesn't give me a synopsis at the back but you know what Hamlet's about it's about the Prince of Denmark and his father is dead and they see his ghost around so Hamlet is consumed by the fact that he realizes that his uncle killed his father and he wants revenge so he goes about trying to kill his uncle and um, poor Ophelia he just um, you know, tries to get around. I got this at the National Theatre in London when I was away to see Three Days in the Country. Um, so this is my Hamlet version. It is ginormous. I want to get a normal version of Hamlet because this is far too big for me, but yeah. Next up, I have Cymbeline by William Shakespeare, which I've still to read. Um, I don't know why I have not read this yet, but um, I actually don't have a clue what this one is about because it doesn't have a sim it doesn't have a thing at the back. I have no clue what Cymbeline is about, but I am going to read it. That is my thing to do over the summer. This is going to be my August TBR because I do want to read Cymbeline. But I picked out all the monologues. <laughs> I didn't read it. I just picked out monologues from what age they would be. So yeah, I, I can't tell you anything about that. Next play I have has two versions of it. It is Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. I have a mini teeny little version that I got at the Globe Theatre in London. And then I have the Wordsworth Classics version, which is basically the best versions you can get because the next two plays are also the same. So um, this is basically about... Much Ado About Nothing has long been celebrated as one of Shakespeare's most popular comedies. The central relationship between Benedict and Beatrice is wittily wittily combative until love prevails broader comedies provided by dogberry verges uh, verge verge and the watchman the drama ranges between the destructionally sinister and the lyrically romantic giving the whole a complex and sometimes problematic character numerous uh, revivals in the theater and on screen have displayed the lively variety and um, interpretive openness of this engaging comedy. I love Much Ado About Nothing. Literally love it. Like, honestly, I have seen the Catherine Tate and David Tennant version far too many times for it to be real. I absolutely adore it. And I just, there's so many lines in this. I just love it. Next up, we have the Scottish play by William Shakespeare. Why am I not saying the name? Well, you can see the name. It's sitting here. I am not actually going to say the name due to the fact that anyone that's watching this could be in a a revival of this, the Scottish play, and it's cursed. So I am very superstitious, so I don't actually say the name of it. Shakespeare's The Scottish Play is one of the most one of the greatest tragic dramas the world has ever known. Um, Macbeth himself, a brave warrior, is fatally impa impelled by supernatural forces, by his proud wife and by his uh, burg burgeoning ambition. As he embarks on his murderous course to gain and retain the crown of Scotland, we see the uh, appalling emotional and psychological effects in both Lady Macbeth, Macbeth and himself. The cruel ironies of their destinies are conveyed in po um, poetry of unsurpassed power in the theatre. This tragedy remains perennial. Peren I can't read. Anyway, this. Uh. Anyway, this is a Scottish play. And finally, my very well-worn well classic that you guys know I obviously had to own if I'm doing the series on it. It is Romeo and Juliet. <sighs> Romeo and Juliet 
is the world's most famous drama of tragic young love. Defying the feud which divides their families, Romeo and Juliet enjoy the fleeting rapture of courtship, marriage and sexual fulfilment. But a combination of old animosities and new coincidences brings them to suicidal deaths. It's Romeo and Juliet! We all know about Romeo and Juliet, but I have this version and currently it has monologues marked in it. Right, so this this version, it's got my things to say because I have, most plays have these, right? This has things to say. Most of it is monologues. The other is my notes for like quotes and for the scene that I'm doing. So yeah, and a um, couple of weeks and you'll get the next one of this. And that is it. That is my play collection. I It could be bigger, but... I'll wait and get some more plays later on. But that is it, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you on Monday. Bye!